Laurent Blanc apparently agrees personal terms with Chelsea, but Mauricio Sarri could still be in the frame for the job and wants to bring El Cedio side with him from Napoli. Also, Ace Milan has said they are no longer in the race for Avar Mata. Find out in today's transfer show. What's going on guys? Welcome back to 100% Chelsea and welcome to another transfer show here on the channel giving you the lowdown of all the news from today. I am Louis and I'm going to get straight into it and obviously we've got to talk about it because who knows what's going on with it at the minute. The manager of Mary Go-Round is still in full swing. Jakanovic apparently seems to be out of the running. I've seen no reports about that today. Uh, it's It's... An interesting scenario. Um, but apparently, Laurent Blanc has agreed terms with Chelsea. So some people thought this was a smokescreen regarding uh, his, uh, you know, a, a move from Maurizio Sarri. However, I, I, I don't know. Um, personally, again, Laurent did a video on this the other day. We we, we all spoken about it. We don't. No one understands the situation about what's going on at the club. So uh, apparently, Laurent Blanc has agreed terms, and David Luiz is very, very keen for this to happen. Obviously, he played for him at PSG, and he's thinking if Conte stays, then he's basically going to have to leave. He's going to have to go and find opportunities elsewhere, and he doesn't want to make that move from Chelsea to another club. And to be honest, this is why he's so keen to see it happen. Obviously, Laurent Blanc brought him to the Parti Prince for like, the ridiculous fee at the time of 50 million, literally four years ago, uh, just before the World Cup, I believe, or midway through. And uh, obviously he's come back, had a superb first season with us, and then he kind of fell away down the pecking order after he questioned Antonio Conte on his tactical choices when we lost to Roma, and quite rightly so. But other than that, I think, you know, Laurent Blanc, from a footballing perspective, fairly average, don't really... I think he, he brings a lot to the table in terms of that managerial appointment. But then as well as that, I just don't think that he is a better option than what we already have. And I keep having to say this uh, on, a, on a regular, just on a regularly, I seem to be saying it. Um, but apparently uh, decisions regarding the manager have slowed down because Chelsea uh, see an opportunity to potentially not have to pay Antonio Conte for anything. So obviously, there's the talk of the Real Madrid job. Zinedine Zidane obviously stepped down a few days ago, uh, straight after winning the third successive uh, Champions League trophy with Real Madrid. He believed that the change was needed. And uh, apparently, Antonio Conte is one of the favourites to replace him. Now, despite not being up to the standard many believe he's capable of this season, he has, without doubt, won us trophies. He is a... Well, he wins trophies full stops wherever he's gone. He's, he's, he's succeeded. He's pushed the club further forward. Um, and obviously, he's won an FA Cup and a league title with us. Uh, in Italy, he won uh, Serie A with Juventus. He pulled what was probably the worst Italian team in 50 years to a decent level in the tournament of, in France for Euro 2016. And apparently, he is now a front runner. So the news I've got here from the Telegraph in front of me says that basically, Conte is in the fold for the job uh, with Real pessimistic over their chances of landing Mauricio Pochettino. The Italian sources were claiming that Max Allegri doesn't really want to move from uh, Juventus to Real Madrid. Obviously, he's somewhere as well. And that Arsene Wenger, <laughs> of all managers, uh, is you know doesn't doesn't really isn't really sure he wants to either go to uh, to Japan or if he wants to take over at Real Madrid. Um, Conte has quickly seen his chances of landing the Champions League winner's job look more realistic, and Chelsea as another thing, will not have to pay him. Now, this just screams true to me. It just, it's just ridiculous. I, it's just something I could see happening. We aren't going to want to pay him the money, and basically we're going to want to save and scrimp as much as we possibly can, despite the new stadium not happening, and uh, basically use this as an opportunity to get Antonio Conte out the door and bring in a new manager, having to only pay one person's fee. Now, for me, if, it was, if there was a better option out there, uh, then yeah, I, I think it makes perfect sense to get rid of Antonio Conte. I don't think he's comfortable here. I think there's too much there's too much love lost, or no love lost between him and the board. Uh, and basically, it's a case of realistically, we need to, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I think both parties need to part ways. Look, he's done a fantastic job for us, no doubt about it. However, uh, he doesn't seem to want to stay at the club. And there's no point in him being here if he doesn't want to do that. You want people who are going to be working for the club and pushing themselves further forward. Um, but yeah, I mean, for me, I think it just makes perfect sense. However, Laurent Blanc, Maurizio Sarri, are they better than him? I don't know. Now, obviously, another manager in contention for the Chelsea job is Maurizio Sarri. And before we go any further, okay, first thing I want to say, fair play, carefree daddy. <laughs> Um, I, I, I got sent the story, so I was, 
I was fair, I, I thought, oh my god, this is very interesting. Didn't really read much further into it. That's my own fault. Uh, and in the end, it kind of made me look like an idiot. So you know, fair play. That story which I said about Mauricio Sarri saying something to Marina is not true. Despite the fact it's been picked up now, and he's done another story which has got picked up about Laurent Blanc. Um, which, I don't know, wasn't that funny. I think it was a little bit too far, but um, I'm not talking about the Sarri. Well, the Sarri thing wasn't exactly great either. But, you know, uh, uh, fair play. But Mauricio Sarri is still in the race for the Chelsea job. Uh, and one thing that he does want to do is if he does come to the club, he wants to bring El Cid Uzai, as I've been told that's how you pronounce it, uh, the Albanian right back, or well, basically utility fullback uh, from Napoli to Chelsea with him. Um, his agent seemed very keen about it as well. Uh, Uzai's agent, he basically said, uh, you know, he's got a 50 million release clause, and if he goes to Chelsea, if Rosario goes to Chelsea, it's very likely that he will follow him. Obviously, he's played very, very often under Mauricio Sarri in the Serie A. Um, I think he replaced Gulam on that left hand side, it was either him or Mario Rui kind of interchanged uh, over who played over there on that left hand side after Gulam basically broke his entire body or his leg, really, just his leg. Uh, against Manchester City, and he he has been uh, a very very decent centre forward. Uh, however, yet again, the same question remains. Look, I mean, it's all well and good talking about potential signings. Um, however, is there a realistic chance of it happening? Potentially, however, fifty million quid at the minute seems to be a bit of a steep ask for Chelsea Football Club if they're bartering over eight million pounds. We spent 13.3 to release Andre Villas-Boas from his job at Porto and we're struggling to get 8 million. 8 million quid for a manager. Now, I understand that there is a political agenda against Roman Abramovich uh, and this isn't me just being a biased Chelsea fan as some people were saying in various parts and various chats. Look, Roman Abramovich is clearly being used as a scapegoat between the UK and Russia in terms of their rookie relations at the minute, leading up to the World Cup and just recently, obviously, at the Salisbury poisonings um, from Russian special agents, allegedly. Uh, and Roman Abramovich goes to renew his visa. Funnily enough, decent match for Putin, apparently. And uh, he gets asked where his money comes from, despite pumping £1 billion into a country which uh, clearly didn't have a problem with it for the past 15 years. But all of a sudden, there seems to be a problem. Obviously, there's been all the talks about him uh, and he uh, he got an Israeli passport to kind of pass the, uh, the border customs. Uh, however, he's not allowed to work in the country. So what does that mean for us as a club? Uh, well, chances are he will probably sell. That's the most logical example. However, it has come out and said he's extremely committed to Chelsea Football Club, which I love from Roman. Uh, however, um, to show that commitment, personally for me, if he is still committed and still wants to invest money, he needs to find a way to do it. Uh, and we need to sort out our current situation. Manchester United obviously signed Fred today. Liverpool have already signed two players. Manchester City are in the progress of signing players. And right now we are still back in square one while other teams are uh, improving. Look, the points gap between us and those clubs last season, yes, it was minimal. And mathematically, he did go down to the final day. However, the longer we take sorting out this situation, uh, the more clubs start getting involved. Yes, their pre-season doesn't start until like midway through the World Cup or post-World Cup. However, for other teams, even if they haven't got pre-season, let's just take Naby Keita, for example. He's gone to Liverpool already. He's getting set in Anfield. He knows he's finding his way around. He's getting his feet under the table. You know, these are scenarios where which are synonymous with, with progress. Obviously, you look at our... 2014, well, look at the 2014 World Cup as an example. So we got our business done very quickly. Cesc Fabregas and Diego Costa both coming straight through the door. And, you know, that was in June. They got their feet under the table. Literally, as soon as the World Cup was done, they knew who they were speaking to. There are already players in the Spain squad which they could speak to regarding um, moves to Chelsea, such as I think Fernando Torres was still, had literally just left. I don't know if he made the squad, but I know he's obviously, he was mates with Fabregas and he had a conversation with him regarding the move. And, you know, we were making progress. I understand that our pre-season doesn't start till later. However, the situation needs to be resolved quickly. I want to see a manager come through the door realistically. If this was my business and this was my club or whatever it was, you want to see those positions filled as quickly as possible uh, by any means necessary. That's how it should be and that's how it should be managed. Now, realistically for me, this isn't being done. We are not moving fast enough and we're letting other clubs pass us by. Yet again, 
Yes, Fred wasn't a target. Yes, Fabinho wasn't a target. Yes, Naby Keita wasn't a target for Chelsea. However, while, like I keep saying, while other clubs improve, we're still stuck in the same position we were in. And from any perspective you look at, improvements mean we the more that they improve and we stay put, it's, that's what it's going to be like. It's going to be them rising up and we will be doing absolutely nothing and we'll be getting better or even worse in some cases with Arsenal already making some movements, obviously signing Stefan Lichstein and pretty much are about to sign Socrates and already have a new manager in place uh, this this summer. Um, look, we need to move quicker. It needs to be done. I, I've, I've now hit the point of I don't care who the manager is. I, don't, I think I, I've made the point of saying I don't care who it is because he'll get replaced after two years. I've made, yes, I, I've said that. I mean, I've hit the point of I do not care who the manager is. Just whoever it is, either back Conte, and if you do back Conte, do it in the transfer market. I'm, I'm, I'm Conte. I don't want Conte out of club anymore because he doesn't want to be here. That's my opinion. All right, but look, if Conte is going to stay and see out the remainder of his contract because he does only have one year left, you take him and you back him in the transfer market. If he wants a player, you go and get it done. Obviously, he was in the loop for the Napoli job, and De Laurentiis said they don't have the budget to sign a certain player. He kept pushing for that player, and I think I can see why Chelsea may have been a little bit annoyed at him recently. Um, but if we're going to get him, if we're going to, you work with him in the transfer market. In that, you already implement the director of football as well. So we've been talking Michael Balak or Giuliano Belletti. Look. Get that position filled, and then you have someone who understands football, who can work directly with Antonio Conte, who does not have the role of manager. He has the role of head coach, which means he doesn't even get to make the call on transfers. So, if that's the case, sort out that contract. But if he's going out the door, get him out the door. If Real Madrid want him, pitch him to him. Literally just give him, give them him. I, I don't care. Just say, pay us X amount of money. You can have Antonio Conte, and we'll just sort ourselves out. But it's just, sorry, we've left him and just bungled him, basically. He left that job at Napoli, which was his dream job. He has a son working there and his wife working there. And uh, he's basically now in the position of shit because we, we've just basically, we're not helping him and we're not paying his release clause. De Laurentiis doesn't want us to, doesn't want to pay and he's quite happy to pay for two managers, which is quite a normal thing in modern football. Um, obviously, Ancelotti is on the payroll at Bayern Munich. That's been well known for quite a long time. And until he gets his contract and his pen to paper on that deal for Napoli, he's going to be continue to be paid by Bayern Munich. We were still paying off Di Matteo and we were still paying off uh, AVB. There are many scenarios where we are paying people off because uh, we keep sacking them. Um, so if if uh, Antonio Conte goes to Real Madrid, we don't. That doesn't have to be another name we can answer this. And because Marina is a penny pincher, she is uh, not going to have to worry about him. So that's it. Either back him or sort it out. Obviously, we spoke about Madrid. Sorry, Laurent Blanc. Some people have claimed he could potentially just be a smokescreen while we sort out this deal for uh, for Madrid. Sorry. Um, to be honest, if it is. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I think either of them are much better than each other. Laurent Blanc just doesn't scream this. He doesn't. He doesn't scream excellence to me. He doesn't scream engaging. I think Antonio Conte, when we signed, obviously everyone saw him at Euro 2016. He screamed engaging. He screamed this this guy who would bring someone forward. Um, obviously, the same happened with Mourinho. The same. I think Di Matteo got the job because he. Uh, he obviously he did really well as his interim management, and obviously won the Champions League. Andre Espas had done well at Porto. You know, Carlo Ancelotti's Carlo Ancelotti. You know, we were in various positions, and the managers that we've hired, the majority have all felt you've almost had a sense of excitement that there's someone that can bring the club further forward. Laurent Blanc doesn't really scream that for me. I can see why people say about Saudi. They want to move away from defensive football and move into this style of what people are saying is forward flowing and sorry ball, whatever it is. Uh, if he brings the club further forward, fine. For me, I've, it, uh, it's going to sound stupid. I mean, he's not exactly top level yet. He hasn't really proved it in the Premier League. Oh, he hasn't. Why not Jokanovic? Because if I'm honest, I've hit the point of, you know, for me, it's just fuck it. I, that's, that's it now. I'm just sort of looking at the scenario like, who would who be the most exciting to see come in as a manager? For me, I think it would be Djukanovic. Youth players would start being played more. He'd find the balance with the transfer budget, which is basically a shoestring budget currently at the minute by the looks of things. Um, and he would be engaging with attacking football, which is what everyone's screaming out for. Sorry, I think, will bring too many problems with the press. Uh, I think his style of football is great. takes too long to implement. Uh, people are going to hate him after six months because he doesn't make his subs quick enough. And if he does, they're... The same subs he always makes and is very predictable. Everything we hate about Antonio Conte, but people seem to keep glazing over that. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I just want to see the scenario sorted out quickly. Um, but then this obviously comes in back, if we're talking about shoestring budget, our final story for that obviously concerns uh, Avar Morata. Now, Morata seems pretty keen on a move away from Chelsea this summer. Uh, obviously, he was spotted in Milan speaking to what many people believe were Juventus officials. Then AC Milan officials have popped up, as well as Inter officials, obviously, with us being linked to Mara Arcadi. We wanted to kind of use that as a swap deal, potentially. Um, but AC Milan apparently ruled themselves out of the race today, according to Sky in Italy. Um, Avara Morata would have cost 75 million quid, or euros, sorry. Uh, and that is a lot of money. Uh, obviously, we're going to want to make a profit on him. Uh, I think we're going to try and push the fact that he scored like 11 goals or something like that in the league. Uh, as us to try and potentially sign him uh, and get the sign or them to sign him and push him away, uh, it's not going to happen. Um, AC Milan are not interested. They also are in the midst of potentially selling the club, the Chinese consortium, which bought them last year and made everyone's favourite Karimo team in FIFA 18 even more exciting. Want to sell because of FFP. They're not able to comply with it. The money's too much or the squad's going too little and they cannot afford to take them to Europa League, apparently. So they're trying to sell it off, but they're trying to make a pro. It's really confusing. It's just all that football financial business stuff. And I might start covering that. If I do, I'll cover that on my personal channel. I'm not going to do any, any of it on here because people aren't going to find it that interesting. But if I do it, I'm going to script it. I'll talk about it. But stuff will be making a return on my personal channel soon as well. Um, be yeah, about football. If we sell Morata, we sell Morata. He's been shit this season. I don't think he's got the capability for the Premier League. I think he's too naive. I think he uh, he hasn't got the mental strength. He doesn't have the physical strength. And quite frankly, people that are saying that he's you could compare him to Didier Dropper didn't have the physical strength or whatever. You could just see already that Didier Dropper was a tank. He, he there was moments where he did hold the ball up, where he did physically push people out of the way. Morata doesn't do that. He flops around like a dead fish. That's what he does. I I. I think he, I just personally, I just cash in and bring in a striker that could work for us. And if we don't have that, look at Tammy Abraham, may as well say, screw it, you have a go. Same goes for Mitchell Batshuayi, if he doesn't make his deal permanent for Borussia Dortmund, although he wants to, that's 50 million quid there. But really, if we sell Mitchell Batshuayi and Alvaro Morata in this window, that leaves us with £125 million uh, in the bank, or €125 million Euros in the bank to play with. Uh, are we going to do it? Who knows? I doubt it. It's Marina Gretzkaya. She will not want to fork out. Um, but yeah, listen, guys, leave me all your thoughts on the stories from today. So you will be back to cover the news for you tomorrow. Uh, make sure you subscribe to 100% Chelsea. All social media links down in the description, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, and Instagram. Also, make sure you follow my personal links that come up here. Also, remember, 68,000 subscribers by the end of the month, and we will be doing a shirt giveaway for you guys. For all the subscribers, your name won't go into a hat because that'll take too long, but we will uh, basically get a random name generator, shove it in, and then whoever wins it, wins it. Um, but yeah, guys, listen... Make sure you subscribe. Hit that notification bell because YouTube's weird and you won't know if we upload uh, if we don't if you don't hit that notification bell. Thank you for watching. Take care, guys, and we will see you very, very soon.